Thanks for joining me today on the Church Brand Guide podcast. My name is Michael Persaud, and today we have a great episode. We're going to be talking about creativity in the church. We have a special guest on who's going to uh, help us to understand what creativity looks like within the church. This is a topic that I'm excited about because we come across it a lot when we work with churches. Uh, we come across this hurdle of why do we need to create a brand? Why do we need to be creative? Can we not just show up, have a service, get a message, fellowship together, and then go on our way? And and really what I try to explain when this uh, this question comes up from time to time of why do, why do we need all this, uh, this pizzazz, as someone I know once put it, um, why do we need all this stuff? Well, the, the reason is that when you're, when you're intentional about creating a brand and about being creative within the church, then you're looking to reach outside the church. You're looking to reach people who are not already a part of the church. Instead of building a club for people that are like-minded, you're looking to reach out to people, going outwards beyond the walls, and, and be attractive to people who might come and visit your church, or even being taken that a step further, going out into the community and inviting people in different ways by serving them and inviting them back to the church to be part of that your your unique community that is uh, that is available to them. So uh, it's a very important topic for me personally because I think it's the the uh, one of the turning points that a lot of churches um, when they when they understand it, it, it begins to take them in a different direction than what they're used to. And it's a direction that's healthy. It creates this healthy culture that's reaching outward where new people are coming and new ideas are are allowed to take place. And it's a healthy, thriving thing that um, uh, people who don't know God are attracted to. The other obstacle that we come across is the how behind being creative. So a lot of churches are are just um, not aware of how you can be creative. How how can they uh, be creative with the budget that they have, with the resources that they have, what does it, what does that begin to look like? And that's a big part of our podcast today. Uh, Nick Goodner is the author of the Creative Church blog, and he um, he actually uh, is the host of it. He has a lot of guest posts and different things on that blog. And I've brought him onto our podcast today to talk about uh, how does this look like um, to be creative? Like, uh, what are other churches who are being successful? Um, in reaching people in a very creative way, what are they doing? And uh, maybe that gives you idea. My my hope is that this this episode gives you some ideas of what that begins to look like for you and for your church. Um, it's going to be unique to what you have. It's going to be unique to your uh, your community, to the audience that you are called to reach. But there's creativity that can happen no matter where you're at, no matter what you have. You can be creative in certain in certain ways. And uh, you can be intentional to reach people that are outside the walls of your church. So let's get into this interview today with Nick Goodner. And uh, he's going to tell us all about creativity in the church. So Creative Church is the blog and the domain is crtvchurch.com. Nick is going to help us understand what Creative Church is, the blog itself. And then we'll go from there and talk a lot more about what is a creative church, and why is that important? Why is it important that we have uh, churches that are that are striving to be to be creative? So, Nick, why don't you tell me a little bit about your platform, the uh, Creative Church blog? Definitely. Um, well, we started back in October 2015. Uh, we started just as an Instagram account, um, and we what we did was we followed churches and everybody, and then what we would do is we would reshare what these churches would put out. So if we see something that we said was quote unquote creative, we would take that and reshare it onto our Instagram page. And from there it kind of built up momentum, a lot more momentum so that, uh, we got people all over, all over the U S right now and all over the world, I guess, um, really sharing their creative ideas and their creative things that they do. And then we reshared on the Instagram. And from that, we built up our different social media platforms and we came out with our website and expanded it to be not only just a community of creatives, but also to help um, different churches and everything be in different churches and people be inspired and create resources for them. 
Great. So why did you feel a calling to start this platform? Um, well, this it, it goes back to a couple years ago. I had started, um, my wife and I, uh, Lydia, we had moved from Tulsa to Bartlesville, Oklahoma. And we moved out there to help a church. I was uh, I took a job as a creative director and children's pastor. You know, it was a smaller church, so I played both roles. And uh, our some friends of ours had just taken it over, so we were really excited about doing that. And at first, everything was going super well, and we had a great relationship with the leadership. Uh, we were getting things done. The ball was rolling, and is. About as quick as it all came together, it seemed like it fell apart very quickly as well. Um, due to just some financial mismanagement and things not being as planned out as they should have been or like I felt like they should have been from the leadership, um, we just had this huge relationship and leadership structure breakdown that just basically everything went south. And I officially resigned last, resigned last April and the effort and the church officially closed in May of last year. And the great relationship that we had with the staff and the leadership, it was just completely gone. So after that, I spent about six months really kicking myself and reanalyzing what had went wrong with what was what what we were doing. Cause I felt I had felt that I was very passionate about the church that I went to go help. And it seemed like it just I just I was just really depressed and very bitter. And I think the other, I mean, definitely the other folks that were with us were very bitter as well because that relationship just ceased to happen anymore. And in October I decided, well, um, I can either keep kicking myself and we can keep de being depressed about this or we can move on and we can do something else. And that's really where the idea of the creative church came about. Cause I said, Hey, I want to do something that, We'll create a community and help churches and church leaders be inspired um, with, you know, just from what other, what other people are creating. And that's one of the main things we did. And one of, the, one of our goals, basically, is to create a community because we feel like during that time, we were in Bartlesville and there was literally no one that I knew personally. Everyone that I knew was, was from the church. So we had no connection. So I'm just sitting there basically all by myself in the aftermath of this. So I felt like we could create something that might be able to help people who go through um, difficult times at their church. Because as you know, it's not always easy to talk to the people that are close to you about difficult things going on. So that's one of the things that we wanted to do with the Creative Church. And that's one of the reasons why we started it, really. So a, a big part of the creative church is to build a community, a community of people who mm -hmm. are wanting to be creative within the church and then to share ideas and to be inspired by one another. Yeah, right. that's that's a great, uh, great thing. So why what's the purpose? Like, why does a church need to be creative? What do you feel is the need there? Well, and this is this is something we have on our website, and this is something I feel I've I've become has become a really scripted response but this is honestly what i feel like um creativity it bridges the gap between what is holy and what is sec secular and it's an ability to unify the audience in a shared experience that will bring them face to face with god and lead them with into salvation with god and it's also a tool for us artists to express our worship to God. But not only that, but it helps the orators, the teachers, the leaders of the church. It helps them explain and illustrate their wisdom. And I feel that whenever we ex exercise um, creativity and excellence, uh, it can be our most significant asset as the church. Yeah, that's great. So what, what are some results that you're seeing as a, as a result of your, your platform that you put out there? Um, some of the big things that we're seeing is uh, definitely definitely churches being inspired by one another. Uh, just over Easter, I saw probably 10 churches that interacted with one another on our platform to know how to build a certain set or a certain art piece. Uh, for instance, there's a New Life Church in Arkansas. Um, 
they built and it was in their lobby uh, a couple Easter's ago and it was this box wall. And if you go on our Instagram feed, you can actually see it, but it's this box wall and it has Jesus on it and it has this awesome illustration and everything. But I saw a church in Kansas actually put that together for their Easter, uh, for their Easter service. And I was like, wow, that's, that's really cool because I know I, I watched the conversation happen of how did you build this on our platform? And I was like, that's, that's the most amazing result we've had. And uh, it was it was really awesome. I thought that's great. So you're bridging bridging those gaps, bringing people together to share ideas. Um, very cool. Very cool that the uh, platform's getting some good traction, especially after this a short amount of time. That's really neat. So what? Uh, how does creativity help a church grow? Um, well, it 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 helps the church grow because, like I said, it it honestly. It helps people to me creativity can help people feel more comfortable in an environment a church environment if you are creatively planning for uh things to happen like art pieces or you know just skits sketches you know even your set or how you perform your worship songs it can make a person who has never been been to church feel way more comfortable in that church environment versus coming in and not knowing what's going on or why they're doing what they're doing. And uh, it helps people to relate really to what's going on as well. Because I feel, as others have said, that art really <clears throat> helps helps us interpret, you know, things. It helps us to feel things. You know, you go watch a you go watch a movie at the movie theater and, you know, if it's a if it's a good story then that story is going to come across and you're going to feel something. You're going to feel, feel what the protagonist is feeling in that story. And those victories that they have are your victories. You know, I don't know how many times I walk out of movie theater myself and I'm just pumped because I saw a great story and I felt like I defeated whatever they were up against. And that's something that I feel the, we as a church, whenever we're able to implement creativity and we're able, able to implement a great story, we're able to help folks relate to what is going on on that stage and really bridge the gap between their seat in the audience and what we're talking about. That's great. So why don't we take a moment, since we were talking about it so much, we're talking about creativity. That could be a lot of different things. What do you define creativity as being within the church? Um, well, for me, creativity is, I, I use it as a term that cover a lot of things, you know, creative, but at the end of the day, to me, it's problem solving. It's coming up and it's solving a, a problem. So, you know, it's not just for artists to have, you know, it's not just being able to paint a good painting or being able to design a great graphic, but it's being able to um, come up with a, a good internal structure for your church, a good leadership structure, you know, solve the problem of, you know, like for instance, we used to have in kids church, you know, we used to have kids that weren't interacting, you know, so what we did was we, uh, we implemented a quiet seat prize and that worked. That was creativity in its truest sense to me, I feel. So it's, it's basically, it all boils down to problem solving and being, and being able to take care of the things that arise in your churches. Yeah, that's great. So why are some churches, um, good at this and some churches fail? Ah, okay. Um, let me think. The short answer is um, they try to copy, I think. I really think that the reason why churches that fail with creativity is because they try to copy without knowing why they're doing something. To me, creativity is originality, and it fits people individually. And while we can be inspired by others, a total knockoff, a total ripoff, to me, that's where we fail. That's where we fail in creativity. And a lot, and you see this happen a lot, just different churches. You know, I follow a lot of church groups on uh, Facebook. And just over the past week, someone posted, and no lie, someone posted, I just found out that my logo, my graphics, my website has all been taken by another church in three states away. And I want to know what I need to do to get them to stop. And it's like, you know, 
to be on to be on the receiving end of someone stealing your artwork that sucks but to be the person that's doing it they need to know not to do it don't do it because you're not benefiting yourself one bit in my opinion because creativity really is about originality and authenticity and whenever we're able to do that we're able to really utilize it in our services so there seems to be a fine line between um maybe using an idea or being inspired by it by some something you've seen somewhere and that can honestly could be from another church or even outside the church maybe you saw something at disney that was really cool Uh, Mm -hmm. so there seems to be a fine line between using something like that and then ripping it off do you have a better way to kind of describe that line um yeah. Uh, if any time you take something, you got to make it better than the person that did it first. So that would be my line. If uh, if you're going to take something, you got to do it better. So you know that that to me is being inspired. Oh, that's good. Or making it yeah. unique as well. I think is a maybe there's a new, unique right, right. twist to it, or how you use it within the context of what you're doing within your community. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Right. right. Then, then making making that you know, fit for your church and your personality type, you know, it's okay to be inspired by someone and say, Oh, well, that's a great title for a series, but just to go and grab their artwork off of Google, that's, that's probably not the best thing for you. You need to make that better. You need to make that fit for you and do it for you and your staff and your church. Yeah. I've seen, uh, there's a lot of great resources out there that um, are put out there on purpose, you know, uh, seeds Mm -hmm. or life that t- that church or these uh, or what's it Elevation Church or New Spring Church, they'll put out there a lot of creative things that churches can use to help them, and uh, I've seen it done well, and I've also seen it done very poorly. Uh, it it really goes to what you were saying, like if it's a very genuine, like hey, we're going to use this idea, but we're going to use it in a way that works for us in our in our community to serve our community, then it could be extremely effective. But then some people are just like, hey, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to grab something. And it's amazing how the mentality behind it really affects the effectiveness of the uh, the inspiration, whether it is inspiration or whether or not it's just you ripping off into somebody else's idea. So, that yeah, that's very good, man. I'm, I'm glad we kind of got into that, that talk because I think there is a fine line there, but it, it makes a huge difference. So let me ask you, is it costly for a church to be creative? Um, I, I personally don't think so. Um if you truly want to be creative and like I said before, creativity to me is problem solving. So if you truly want to be creative, you can find the ways around the budget. And that's one of the things we, we make sure that we share on our Instagram page is churches that do stuff that, you know, for a fact did not cost them very much to pull off, but it still looks great. And it's still done with the best of their ability. You know, um, we as a church have, access to volunteers and people in our community. And I don't think that if, if you truly want to build something that's creative or you truly want to create something that's creative, it doesn't, it, you know, you can figure out a way to do it without being so expensive or being, you know, e- even spending money at all. Yeah, that's good. What's uh, what is it that a successful church look like? looks like? Um, let me, like, let me put it this way. What are churches who are being creative in a successful way, what does that look like? Is there a certain, um, can you identify a few things maybe that, that, um, creative churches in your, in your opinion, in your definition, uh, look like, what what are they doing? Yes. Um, for me, if a creative church is going to be successful, number one, it has to be original. It has to have originality in whatever it's going to create. Uh, number two, it has to do it authentically and it has to do it, um, it has to make sense for them on why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, Don't just create things that, you know, you don't know why you're doing it. If you don't, my my saying always is, if you don't know why you're doing something, then don't do it. And a lot of people will go, well, uh, the reason why we do it is because, you know, we have to No, that's not, that's not a good enough reason. You got to come up with, you know, an actual authentic reason why you're doing something. And then number three for me would be uh, quality, being able to produce the best that you can produce. Um, you know, we, we throw around the word excellence a lot and, uh, it's a great word to throw around and it's a great thing to have, but if you're going to have quality or excellence, 
then you're going to need to make sure that you're doing it the best that you can do it. And at the end of the day, you sit back and say, that was the best I can do. Then that to me is excellence. You know, it's not always, it might not always be crafting the best looking thing in the world, but if you did it with the best of your ability, then you've done things with excellence. So to sum it all up, people who do creativity successfully are those who do it originally, authentically, and they do it with a certain amount of quality and excellence. No, it's very good. I think uh, that really has a very genuine feel to it. Like if you if you can get those three qualities in there, it'll be a very uh, a genuine thing. And, and I think maybe that's part of the uh, the conversation as well is just being um, genuine in how you represent uh, the the calling, the the vision that God has given you. Um, you could do it in a very creative way. You can borrow ideas. You could be inspired. Um, but when you're when you're doing it in in a genuine way, then it comes across as being authentic, like you were saying. So can you share a maybe a, a story about a church that you've seen that, that gets this right? Um, that You asked me this question in the pre, pre-production uh, stuff, and I was thinking about it and thinking about it, and I couldn't come up with any story that worked well. But I did come up with three different churches that, if you're listening, you should definitely follow. Um and I, and I hope this works, but uh, because it's all very visual stuff to me, like I'm a very visual person, like I said, and I just can't, I always can't come up with a good story. But these three churches to me, they really stood out and, and they're churches that I follow constantly. And number one would be a church called Rock City Church, and it's up in uh, Ohio, I believe. And their, their username on Instagram is at Rock City Church, it's R-O-C-K City Church. So uh, their brand for me really stands out. Uh, they're always able to create consistent branding and it always looks really great. They're able to use um, their logo, their look as a launch board for everything that they create, uh, whether it's sermon graphics or announcements for uh, their church, whatever it is, or even I was looking at their uh, end of the year report last week and it looks great and it, and it reflects their brand. Cause a lot of times, as you probably know, uh, churches don't really, they kind of ignore their brand when it comes to creating and designing things. And uh, they forget, Hey, we should probably get our sermon artwork to look like, you know, what we normally produce. And they kind of create something that's off the wall. But to me, rock city church does it very well. They do it. They, they keep creating consistency. And then the second guy, the second people that uh, I found, they're not technically a church, uh, but they're really awesome. And it's Green Staging Design. And it's just at Green Staging on Instagram. And you might have seen some of their stuff, but they create probably some of the coolest art installation and coolest uh, lobby pieces that you'll ever see. And uh, they work a lot for Passion City Church in Atlanta. So uh, they're always coming up with great cool stuff. And then last but not least to me, New Life Church um, at nlc.creative uh, out of Arkansas. They're always, they know how to put the personal flair to everything that they do. And they're always, um, they're always more than responsive to uh, teach you or teach how they do something. So it's, it's always great. Man, that's so those are Those are my three. That's awesome. Uh, I think everyone that is uh, interested in being creative, you're always looking for inspiration. So those three uh, churches are, or really organizations uh, are great starting points, or at least some, some, some to add to your list if you haven't already uh, added them to your list. Well, Nick, thanks for, um, for sharing with us. I know uh, maybe we, we can add this in there uh, into our conversation, but you, um, what church do you, do you attend? Uh, I attend Church on the Move here in Tulsa. Church on the Move in Tulsa, and they're, uh, yeah, go ahead. They're a, they're uh, kind of a thought leader within the uh, the creative industry, I would think. Um, you would probably say that. Is there um, anything you could share about that church in particular? Why you attend? What what you enjoy about what they do? Um, church on the Move. Uh, well, to me, they're the greatest when it comes to creativity. They uh, they of course produced the Seeds Conference a couple years ago. If you know about it then you know how awesome it is um but they take they they take the authentic part of creativity to a whole nother level for me i think it's just sitting in their services and watching what they do you always know that they're doing things for a reason and with a reason 
And that's really awesome. And that's something I look for, especially whenever I'm going to a church, um, to be able to see that out of them. And, uh, it's every single week, they always do stuff to the best of their abilities and the best that they can create. So it's, it's awesome to be able to attend and be a part of a church like that. Yeah, it seems to be like they, uh, they're kind of the great mix of great leadership, creative people. Um, they they put themselves out there. They take ideas from other places, but they just do it in a very genuine way, and it all comes together, and it's amazing. It's like over-the-top amazing, and uh, it's just a wonderful uh, wonderful church that I've been following for quite some time, and uh, one I think one that you can add to your list that, that you uh, mentioned earlier, if you don't know about them mm-hmm. already, which <laughs> I think just about everybody knows about them. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, yeah, thanks, Nick, for sharing uh, today about uh, Creative and Creative Church. Um, your blog is thecreativechurch.com, and the domain is crtvchurch.com. So I'd recommend uh, you check check that out and see what Nick's doing. So he's uh, one of the cool things I enjoyed about reading the blog and, and just as I visited it was just seeing a bunch of different contri- contributors uh, on there. So is that part of your strategy, just having different people contribute? Yeah, um, I write okay, but I'm not the world's best writer. I So if you do go to the blog, you're going to notice that there's a ton of other people that have contributed. And that's one of the things that we do to impl- implement that community is we definitely want people sharing their ideas. So we try to find the best people to write and be a part of that um, on that on that blog. Excellent. So uh, Nick reached out to us and then we contributed and that's how we got to know Nick. And uh, we look forward to kind of just following Nick and seeing his journey and where he ends up going uh, with the with the platform he's created. So I, I want to invite you to join him as well and uh, follow the creative church and uh, see where Nick goes with all of this. And uh, he, we're kind of paralleling, paralleling in our time frame. We're about the same time where we started up uh, with our, our platform as well. So it'll be interesting to uh, just kind of see how it goes, you know, the next six months, the next year, that type of thing, as we we step out there into this calling, this passion that God has put into our hearts to help um, churches all across the country, all across the world, really, to 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 lean into this creative, um, uh, uh, the power of creativity, really, and to get the gospel out there to reach more people, to be more effective. And I think that's that's the big idea behind all this stuff. Is that some churches we Nick sometimes we get pushback on like hey why don't you just preach a good sermon and just be done with it do you have any people I, I guess do you have a response to that because we get that from time to time it's like hey we, all you need is a a good sermon and people come and it'll be amazing um yes uh, but you have to always think about everybody in the audience not everyone's going to respond to just talking not everyone's going to respond to just a great sermon. Uh, and creativity always helps to open up those doors for other people who learn differently than those who might just learn something from a great sermon. Yeah, that's great. And I think that's where a lot of churches are, um, they're really getting on board with it because they realize that, you know, this, it takes a lot more than just a message from a, from a a pulpit in order to reach the audience that's out there, especially a very tech savvy audience that's um, being raised up in this, uh, this culture today. So, Nick, thanks again for joining us on the podcast. I really appreciate your uh, your input and what you've added to the audience of the, the Church Brand Guide. Thanks again. And, uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll see you next time. See you next time. I'm so grateful that Nick came onto our podcast today to share on this big, big topic of creativity. Uh, we could unpack that all day long, and we probably will over the course of many episodes just come back to the big idea of creativity within the church but he gives us a really a good insight uh, to kick it off uh, in today's episode. I want to invite you to go to the show notes on the blog. The churchbrandguide.com blog has show notes, and we provide links to the resources that Nick has mentioned, including the churches to follow that he mentioned there towards the end. So um, check out the blog. It's also got a bunch of other resources that we want to provide for free just to help uh, churches just to be creative, to be uh, excellent in how they do it and to have a better understanding of what creativity looks like and how they can pull it together. So we have a bunch of resources already on there. In fact, right now on there, there's a free ebook that you can download that has um, basically a how-to on church branding, uh, how to brand your church and what, what does that begin to look like. 
as you begin to pull that together and you get your, your mentality around the idea of creating a brand for your church. So that should be a very useful and helpful resource for you. If you don't already have it, I want to highly encourage you to, to get it on the, uh, the blog, uh, the website that we have set up. Also, I want to mention another resource. Uh, one of the things I love to do is introduce some books that um, are just super helpful for churches. And many times I try to get books that are not church-related um, because I think we can learn a lot from different companies and organizations and, and how they approach things. Sometimes it gives us a different perspective, um, but so it helps us to think differently than, than our world that we're constantly engaged in. So the book today that I want to tell you about is called Creating Magic, and it's by Lee Cockrell. And this is a book about Disney and how Lee Cockrell, as CEO of Disney for uh, several years, was able to create a, a wonderful culture within the organization. Um, Disney has always been a wonderful company. Uh, when Lee came along, there was kind of a, uh, a dip in, in the Disney brand. And then Lee introduced these really, uh, I don't know, just very hospitable things that uh, allowed Disney to turn around their brand and become this... Uh, this wonderful and inviting um, uh, uh, organization that was able to expand into uh, Paris and, and during Lee's time. So he talks about that. He talks about his background in the uh, hotel industry and how he just uh, was uh, super focused on serving, serving guests. And uh, Lee was actually over the parks of Disney World down in Florida. That was his, uh, uh, his division of the company. So he talks a lot about how they uh, implement small little things that are just uh, meant to be hospitable, and uh, they make a huge difference to guests, and uh, it makes them come back or want to come back. And uh, he, he, it's just a wonderful read, uh, a wonderful thing for churches to be aware of, some of the big ideas that he shares and that Disney implements even to this very day to help people feel welcomed when they come to their properties. Thanks again for joining me today on the Church Brand Guide podcast. I'll see you next time.